Weight loss for women over 50 can be elusive, right? I know, I'm preaching to the choir. You did not need to hear me say that. What you used to do doesn't work anymore. And they talk of inflammation, and yet you don't feel badly when you eat the foods they suggest cause it. If you're feeling torn between what you're reading, hearing, and old school lessons or lifelong habits, this may help you understand the connection between your gut health and weight loss for women over 50. My guest is a bestie as well as an expert. And what could be better, right? He's everywhere you've seen experts, Dr. Oz, Mind Body Green, a guest on dozens of popular podcasts. And I've had the good fortune to know not only Dr. Pedre, but to dine next to the person that he is. And I'll say this, you want to know him too. And you'd want to salsa with him if he will, but this unfortunately is audio only. Weight loss for women over 50 isn't a new topic here. I'm sure you'll agree. Yet this angle is, we're going to go a little bit deeper. We're going to discuss leaky gut and really define it again for you. Discuss a cleanse or what cleansing really is and what it means to heal the gut. If you eat and if you poop, stay tuned because this is for you. We all need a healthy gut. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns, and I share what to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset so you can have the energy and the vitality that you want, need, and deserve in this second and better half. Let's go. Dr. Vincent Pedre is in the house is the medical director of Pedre Integrative Health and founder of Dr. Pedre Wellness, nutraceutical consultant for Nature MD and orthomolecular products SEO of Happy Gut Life LLC and a functional medicine certified practitioner in private practice in New York City since 2004. He believes the gut is the gateway to excellent wellness. As the best-selling author of Happy Gut, the cleansing program to help you lose weight, gain energy, and eliminate pain, featuring his proprietary blueprint for healing the gut, the Gut Care Program, he has helped thousands around the world resolve their gut-related health issues, and we cannot wait to talk to him. Hey, Vincent, thanks so much for being here. Hey, I am always excited to talk with you. Uh, I just um, love your energy, love the colors that you wear. You're always like the, wearing these bright colors, I think reflect uh, your your beautiful smile and, and just uh, the enthusiasm that you bring to everything that you do. Wow. Okay, listeners, I know it's just audio, but I'm blushing just in case you just (laughs) want to fill in the blanks. (laughs) And this guy can dance too, just saying. All right. I mean, this topic (laughs) is, we can't waste any time because almost every listener, I am certain, doesn't matter what her goals are or her status is. Most of my midlife women, 45 to 70 is, is our pretty much target range. If you're younger than that or older than that listening, don't go away. I love you too. But they're all experiencing some kind of gut disturbance. It might be that changes in midlife and hormonal changes have brought this on. So let's dive into explaining why the gut is connected to so many seemingly unrelated health issues like skin rashes or breakouts, headaches, low energy, weight gain, and difficulty losing weight. Yeah. So one thing that, I mean, I, I'm just, as you were saying that, I'm thinking of all the patients I've taken care of over the years that have gone through menopause. And it's almost like you feel like, um, who took my body away and gave me this new body that I don't want to be in. 
<laughs> what's happening here. Like all the rules are changing mm-hmm. and I didn't subscribe to that. Like I didn't sign up for a rule change. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I still want my, my old body that would respond to whatever interventions uh, that you do. Amen. And the thing is that I think there, there are a lot of things um, you know, let's just put ourselves in the mind and the life of, of a woman going through transition, probably going to have kids in their teenage years, maybe, maybe not, you know, but kind of as, as a general rule. And just think about the stress on the body, the stress of going through the transition and what that does. And then, of course, if you're raising kids, <laughs> the stress, and I can speak to that because I have a teenage son, the stress of raising a teenager and all of these things, you know, stress, having to go on antibiotics, getting an infection, all these things are an attack on the gut. And what they do is they increase intestinal permeability and they can even alter the composition of the gut microbiome, especially if you go on antibiotics. And I can't see who's listening, but I bet you if I asked, if I was in a room with all of your listeners and I said, raise your hand, if you've been on a round of antibiotics in the last year, how many people do you think will raise their hand? Every one of them. Yeah. At least 95%, 99% of them would say, yeah, I've been on an antibiotic. And when you go on an antibiotic, it's wiping out your gut microbiome for anywhere between three months up to 12 months. Uh, z pack one of the most commonly prescribed antibiotics, and look, I've used it with patients. It can be life-saving. It can be a game changer for a lot of things. It was being used during COVID. Uh, but it, it a five-day course of Zithromax takes your gut three to six months to recover if it can and if you're eating the right things to help it recover. That was a mouthful right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and if you take Cipro, for example, one of the most commonly prescribed antibiotics for urinary tract infections, which again, they make their, <laughs> their, they, they come visit you again during menopause because as you're going through transition, things are getting drier. You know, there's more friction with sex. There's higher risk for getting UTIs then you might go on a course of Cipro. Well, five days of Cipro will take your gut 12 months to recover from. I mean, just think about that. So address this. So there's a woman who might be on an antibiotic on a regular basis. What's that doing to her? It's basically, it's almost like, um, you know, that, that, Greek mythology character. I think it was Atlas who was carrying the boulder up the hill. And every time it was almost, you know, imagine you're like trying to rebuild your gut microbiome. And then at the very end, the boulder rolls back down the hill and you're back to the starting point. You know, every time you're taking an antibiotic, it's messing with the composition of your gut microbiome. And it's skewing it in a way that can cause bad bugs to overgrow and even yeast to overgrow. So a lot of women will have yeast overgrowth issues, especially when they're on chronic antibiotics. And the reason I'm putting so much emphasis on that, you know, because one, it's something that everybody experiences, but two, it leads to the underlying problem that then causes weight gain, you know, especially that, that belly fat, uh, building up fat around the middle and mental fog, fatigue, joint aches. So it can lead to a lot of the things that we think of as I'm getting old, (laughs) but it's really that your gut is just out of funk (laughs) and you've got to get that back in order. When you have leaky gut, that allows, imagine it's, it's like your border patrol. The gut barrier is keeping out all of these substances that shouldn't get through while only allowing nutrients, vitamins, amino acids, fats to get through and nourish your body. That's the ideal. But when you have leaky gut, it's going to allow, I mean, they've even found, um, uh, research has shown that people with leaky gut can have bacteria and bacterial DNA in their bloodstream. So you're getting like, 
it's almost like, you know, you're, you're getting, um, the, <clears throat> the bad guys, uh, coming through the border and that's going to wreak havoc. Um, it activates the immune system. It's one of the most powerful activators of the immune system, especially something that's secreted by a type of bacteria that lives in the large intestine uh, called endotoxin. Um, and even the word <laughs> endotoxin sounds kind of ominous, right? Like you don't want endotoxin in your system. But studies have shown that the higher the endotoxin levels are, the greater the risk for developing obesity, weight gain, diabetes, um, and a whole host of inflammatory issues that can lead to things like heart attacks and stroke and things that we want to avoid as we get older. So the, the underlying root cause for a lot of things um, as we get older is, is this um, increase in permeability in the gut border that our border patrol just gets more leaky and is allowing inflammatory substances to get into the body that shouldn't be there. Okay. So you've described to us what leaky gut is. What besides antibiotics would cause it? Yeah. Uh, the standard American diet mm -hmm. <laughs> right there. <laughs> French fries, hamburgers, milkshakes, you know, the majority of people are lactose intolerant or even also have dairy sensitivity. And that can lead to all sorts of discomfort in the gut and even diarrhea, constipation. Stress is, I call stress like an attack on the gut lining. So when you're highly stressed, they've even shown in studies that it can alter the gut microbiome and not in a good way, in a bad way. So the more relaxed you are, the more vagal tone you have, the better you're going to digest, the easier your gut function is going to be and your gut permeability is going to be more normal. Uh, but again, you know, I was talking about you know, women in transition or in that time of life, maybe they have kids who are teenagers, there's going to be stress in the household, right? <laughs> like, uh, no contest. Uh, yes. <laughs> A house with teenagers can be a stressful house. Um, a lot of times, you know, at that age, both men and women could be going through transition, you know, not just menopause, but maybe the relationship is getting to an inflection point. Things are not quite right. So maybe there's a divorce. And that also, I mean, divorce is one of the most highly stressful uh, things that people can go through aside from the death of a partner or loved one. And all of these things are going to cause uh, dysfunction in the gut and an increase in gut permeability along with alcohol, you know, alcohol intake. That's also going to disturb the gut microbiome, the sugar from alcohol, alcoholic drinks can uh, promote the growth of yeast in the gut, which again is going to continue to just kind of, it's just like throwing more, more fuel to the fire and altering the way things are. Uh, for women who are on birth control, I don't know if you know this, but birth control, the birth control pill increases gut permeability. So a lot of women go on birth control and then they gain about 10 to 15 pounds. And you wonder, well, you know, why is, why is that happening? Is it the hormones? It could also be because it's increasing gut permeability. And when you've got more gut permeability, you have more inflammatory substances, and weight gain is an inflammatory condition. It's an activation of the immune response. It's an activation of fat cells uh, that can get activated by the same things that immune cells will get activated by and will secrete the same types of chemical messengers that um, tell the body to store more fat and use less calories, you know, um, and just, you know, keep it, keep it on. So, um, I hope I'm, I'm painting a, a picture of why, you know, it's kind of complex, but you, I'm sure as people are, are listening to this thinking, yeah, I eat some ice cream. Um, I like to have my glass of wine every night, maybe two or three on the weekend. I'm under a lot of stress. So that makes me want to drink and 
And then, yeah, I think I, I deserve those French fries after a rough day with the kids or, you know, so yeah. you can see like it's, it's this perfect storm that can, that builds into what we then see as, and what I see walking through my door is people are overweight, they're fatigued, they have brain fog, they've got bloating, maybe they have constipation or IBS like symptoms, diarrhea, and they're just kind of not feeling great. You know, they're not optimal. Perfect. I want to, I want to ask you a question and this might be kind of an outlier. So we don't have to spend a lot of time on it, but in fairness to listeners who think, well, I don't have a problem with dairy. What do you mean? I have to cut that out. I like my milk. I, I literally have had this conversation with someone who, um, you know, wanted to lose weight. We've looked at every other thing. And I said, we may want to try this. I said, I know it was the last thing you wanted to do, but you know, why not test it? remove it for a short period of time. Let's see what happens and how you do. And she wasn't very open to that, but talk about that. I mean, there don't necessarily have to be diarrhea, constipation, kinds of reaction or skin mm -hmm. flare ups do there for dairy to potentially be harmful. Yeah, there might be other other types of reactions so you can either have a dairy intolerance because your your gut doesn't have the right bacteria doesn't have enough enzyme to break down the sugar lactose and that that's what we call lactose intolerance a lot of people might think they don't have that and that dairy is okay but dairy has two main proteins one is casein and the other one is whey and casein and whey are difficult proteins for us to break down. And a lot of people can develop immune reactions to these proteins. They may not be allergies. So there's allergies, which are immediate and there's sensitivities, which are slower reactions that are a little bit harder to know that they're there, but they can manifest as migraines, as headaches, as um, post-meal fatigue, joint aches, sometimes skin rashes, like really minor stuff. Um, it could be like you're, you're, you're getting some adult acne here and there, but it's um, not something that used to happen. Or there's like just little patches of eczema. Well, those are signs that your body's having an immune reaction. And a lot of times it can be an immune reaction to a food. And dairy is one of the top two that a lot of people have reactions to. And, and I'm sure you might, you might ask me like, well, well, how about yogurt? You know, things like I've heard that yogurt is, is really good for you. So how do I, how do I reconciliate these conflicting pieces of advice? Like don't drink milk, but yeah, I should have some yogurt. And again, yogurt is fermented. So yogurt's going to have a lower, uh, lactose level. So for people who are lactose intolerant, um, a lot of times they can, they can still tolerate a small amount of yogurt or even kefir, which is more of like a fermented, uh, yogurt drink. And, um, even cheeses, uh, hard cheeses that have been aged are easier for people who have lactose intolerance. They can tolerate those. And then Help. we can get into like, you know, organic versus non-organic, you know, anybody who's having dairy, you want to go for organic, if possible, grass fed, uh, milk based products. Um, but I agree, you know, sometimes, you know, I tell people the devil is in the details and <laughs> what I've found over the years is again, because so many things are related to gut health that. Sometimes it's as simple as identifying that one food group that is causing a problem. And it might be the thing that's short circuiting your weight loss. It might be what's making you not feel so great and too tired to get to the gym a lot of times. And the other thing, so the devil's in the details. And the second thing is a little can be a lot for your body. Cause a lot of people tell me, well, I only have 
dairy like a couple of times a week. I don't really have a lot of it. And they think, well, it shouldn't be having an effect because I'm really not exposing myself to a lot of this. But what I tell them is you have to think that your gut and your body and your immune cells, they're all functioning at a microscopic level. So what looks like a little to you, if you were to shrink yourself, like, you know, one of those movies or cartoons and look at it from the point of view of a cell, it's actually still a lot. And it's enough to cause an immune reaction if one is there. That's such a great point that for those of you who are listening and that this is the one thing that women seem to be very territorial about when it comes to dairy. This is the most common. There is the yogurt thing too, but generally it's cream in my coffee. You're going to take cream away. And mm. they'll say, well, I'm only having it then. And I liken it to, it's like, that's an, like an IV drip going in you though. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's a life-saving thing if you need medicine like that because it keeps it in your body. But if it's something you don't need, it's also keeping it in your body. So yeah. Yeah. I and that. I tell people, look, I'm not telling you to give it up forever. What I am telling you to do is let's do an experiment for the next four to six weeks. You're going to be totally clean. There's going to be no dairy in the diet. And then after, and then you're going to monitor, you're going to journal every day. You're going to watch your symptoms. You're going to write down how you're feeling. How are your bowel movements? How's your head feeling? How do you feel in general? And see if there are any changes and then reintroduce what you were doing at the four or six week mark. Sometimes I go out as far as eight weeks. And when you do continue to journal and because a lot of times People don't know the effect that a food is having on them, whether it's dairy, whether it's gluten, corn, soy. They don't know until you've removed it for a certain period of time. So you're allowing your gut to kind of heal from the effects. You're allowing your, if there's an immune reaction, you're allowing it to cool off. It takes a food sensitivity reaction 21 days to reach its half life. So at least if there's an immune reaction, it's gone down by 50% after 21 days. That's why I like the fudge factor of getting to the four weeks, six weeks. So you're kind of guaranteeing that you've really reduced the reaction. And then when you reintroduce the food, journaling, because it, the reaction could be anything. You're looking for something that is not part of the background. You know, so maybe you have it and then your, your face looks kind of flushed for the next day. Like your cheeks are a little rosier or maybe you get itchy. You don't get a rash, but you feel kind of itchy. You know, you've got to look for little subtle cues because our body is always speaking to us. You just have to listen. And by reintroducing it, you know, you can test and see you might be okay with yogurt, but not be okay with cream in the coffee. Great point. Okay. So we're talking about gut healing. Talk about, I mean, is there a difference between gut healing or cleansing? Like what is a cleanse from you? I mean, we're not talking about, we're not talking about the broad array of people calling their thing a cleanse. We're talking with the guru, the expert <laughs> in gut healing right here. What is a cleanse? Who wrote a book about a cleansing day cleanse? <laughs> who all day, every and, day, does only and this, lose yes. weight and, and you know, <laughs> what is energy it? and and just feel great overall. Um, so when we're when we're gut healing, we might be doing things that are very directed to healing leaky gut, to rebalancing the gut microbiome. So everybody knows about taking a probiotic. I'm sure everyone by now has heard about the benefits of taking probiotics. Uh, the benefits of of, of nutrients like L-glutamine for reversing leaky gut, uh, one of the most re well-researched nutrients for that or, or leaky gut formulas. But when you're cleansing, you're, it, and, and for me, I think there's a lot of cleanses out there that don't pay attention to the gut. So the, the difference in the way that I, when I guide people through a cleanse or people follow the cleanse in my book, in my 20-day cleanse, um, the difference is that 
we're we're also paying attention to the gut because I'm saying the gut is the foundation for everything. And when you're cleansing, you've got to support the three pillars of detoxification. And those three pillars are the liver. Everybody knows like when you're detoxing, cleansing, like your liver needs to be functioning properly because that's what processes hormones, drugs, metabolites, uh, foreign chemicals. Your liver is doing all of that work. Very important. But your gut is another organ of detoxification. It's got to be working properly. It's, you've got to be pooping at least once every day. So when you're detoxing, when you're cleansing, you've got to poop every day. And again, I would, I, I would want to bet that if I'm in a room with all of your listeners right now, <laughs> yep. and I say, raise your hand if you poop every day, how many do you think are going to raise their hands? Oh, okay. Do I win a prize if I get this right? I'm going to say <laughs> I I, 41%. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking somewhere in that range of close to 50%, but definitely not over 50%, right? Agree. Yep. And if you're not pooping every day, then your body's holding on to toxins that can potentially, if they're sitting too long in your stool, get released and recirculate. And one of those, and not everything that is toxic could be like a, a, you know, environmental chemical that you're exposed to. It can be your own estrogen that has been metabolized. It has been anchored. It has been released in the bile, but now it's sitting in your gut for too long. And if there are certain types of bacteria that have an enzyme called beta glucuronidase, that can come in and basically remove that anchor. The enzyme cuts that anchor off. Now estrogen is free to float back into the body and cause an excess of estrogen. And we don't want that. You know, we want a balance between estrogen and progesterone, but gut issues can lead to estrogen dominance. And, and worldwide, I mean, countrywide, this is a problem that plagues many women. They have too much estrogen, not enough progesterone. And estrogen being a growth signal causes things like water retention, uh, breast tenderness, and, and of course it can promote the, the growth of either benign or, or, or t- tumors that become cancer. So again, the, there's this tie between the gut and, and hormone balance. So yeah, so that was the second pillar of detoxification is the gut. And the third which is often forgotten, and we should actually almost think of it as an accessory organ in the body, even though it's not ours, is the gut microbiome. Because the gut microbiome is also helping us break down and digest all sorts of substances. And it's essential part of detoxification. And going back to where I started talking about like who's been on antibiotics, probably the majority in the last year, that's caused a dysbiosis imbalance between good and bad bugs in the gut that leads to all sorts of disorder and, and imbalances in, in the way the gut operates and, and then, then, of course, leaky gut. So when you're cleansing and you're putting someone through a cleanse, you want to support these three pillars of detoxification. It's really important. But you also want to take out from the diet, you know, a lot of cleanses, and they do this, you're, t- you're removing foods that are going to be problematic that, and from my point of view are also foods that can cause leaky gut, that cause gut dysfunction. So gluten, dairy, soy, corn. I also remove eggs because eggs are in the top 10 food um, allergens, food sensitivities. Um, So a lot of people surprisingly have a sensitivity to eggs, but they don't know it. Yes. I find that too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you a brief story. I had a patient who came to see me. She's a woman in her mid fifties, I think at the time. And she had read my book and she had been doing all sorts of programs. She had an autoimmune disease, but she was suffering from nausea and the nausea wouldn't go away and no doctor could help her. And she was trying all sorts of paleo diets. Um, and she tried other other paleo, very popular paleo diets that still allow eggs. And she came up on my program that takes eggs out also. And I, again, I take them out for the 28 days 
and then you reintroduce them to see, you know, do you react to them or do you not? Well, the only thing she had not done in all these different diet experiments was take eggs out. When she took the eggs out, her nausea disappeared that she had lived with for like five to six years. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's, it's always like amazes me that something so simple that could be right under your nose. And yet it's so simple that a lot of people think, well, yeah, I mean, I eat eggs all the time. That, that's not the problem. And yet it could be, or it could be cinnamon that is triggering your migraines. Like I had one patient where we figured out that she was having cinnamon in her oatmeal every day and that that was triggering her migraines. Oh and my she gosh. Took the cinnamon out. We got her migraines. I mean, she was having so many migraines per month. We, in the first month, like they were down 50% just by taking cinnamon out after, after discovering that she had a, an immune reaction. So she had a, a blood test that showed that she had a sensitivity to cinnamon. Now, of course, anybody who's having reactions to food, you always want to look at the underlying root cause and the root cause being leaky gut. Because if your gut order is working properly and your, your gut enzymes, your stomach acid, your proteases that break down protein are all working properly, then you're going to break down your food into amino acids and we don't react to amino acids, but we do react to proteins and proteins can get through even when they're just partially digested. But if they're long enough, they can, they can get through the gut barrier if it's leaky and that provokes an immune response. And it can do all sorts of wacky things like even um, mess with the enteric nervous system and the vagus nerve and cause Something like nausea, for example. Wow. But it's like Hansel and Gretel leaving breadcrumbs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and okay. what I love about it is that it's kind of also like Sherlock Holmes. Like I'm always, you know, when when someone comes to work with me, it's kind of like you're, you're kind of trying to figure out a mystery. And a lot of times they've they've already seen multiple doctors. So yeah. but I will tell you, I'm always amazed. I have people come work with me after they do my program. And the program actually fixes so many problems that by the time they see me, we're just kind of working on the low hanging fruit, but everything else, like, like half of their problems usually get better just by doing the program, which is a cleanse that really takes into account gut healing as part of the, the whole picture of cleansing. Very cool. Okay. So let's talk about your program that you call it gut care. And then that's yeah. part of your happy gut 28 day cleanse. So it, talk us through that just a little bit and why did you develop it? Oh yeah. Well, I was my first gut patient. <laughs> Having been on 20 plus rounds of antibiotics as a teenager, completely destroyed my gut microbiome. I mean, just think about what I said before, like it takes anywhere up to 12 months to recover from antibiotics. And I was on multiple rounds every single year. So my gut was never recovering. I developed leaky gut. Now I didn't know this, but I had developed a sensitivity to both gluten, dairy, and, and a couple of other foods. And guess what a teenager eats? Pizza. Lots of gluten and dairy, <laughs> ice cream, cereal, milk, sandwiches. Yeah, so I was continuously toxifying myself. My immune system was a wreck. I kept getting sick over and over. And it was part of what motivated me to become a doctor is I wanted to hack why I was getting sick so often, and I didn't want to get sick as much. <laughs> well, turns out there are a lot of people with gut issues out there who have been on lots of antibiotics, just like I have. And when I was figuring all this out, I was already a doctor and I was studying functional medicine and it was like, wait a second, the gut microbiome, the gut, like, you mean I don't have to live with this for the rest of my life? Like I can actually fix this. And I became so curious about it that I just loved working with patients that came in with gut issues. And again, when I say gut issues, I mean, it, so many things related to gut, you know, it's weight gain, mental fog, 
the team, joint dates, so you name it. But I was I was so interested in looking at health through the lens of the gut that <clears throat> that basically led to creating the gut care program, uh, which is basically simplifies my whole blueprint for healing the gut in four simple steps, cleanse, activate, restore, and enhance. And each step is about different things. And they mean a lot of different things. Like cleanse is about taking out the um, high sensitivity foods, but also cleansing the gut of bad bacteria and other bugs, as well as cleansing the mind of negative thoughts because I think when you're when you put yourself in a cleanse and you're cleansing your body you should also kind of do kind of an inner analysis of what is it that you hold in your mind the types of thoughts that um, you tend to entertain and a lot of people you know including me I would raise my hand um, default into negative thinking and or negative self-talk and I think it's very important what I learned working with patients, how important mindset is as part of any transformative health program. So when you're doing a cleanse or whatever it is that you're embarking on, uh, mindset is super important. So I included that as part of the cleanse. Activate is all about activating the digestive system. It's a lot of people, when their gut has been a mess, they're actually not producing enough digestive enzyme. And you might know this if when you eat, food just sits in your stomach and you feel like it takes forever to digest. Well, the reason that's happening is because maybe you're not producing enough stomach acid. Maybe you don't have enough enzyme production. Uh, maybe your, your, your saliva production is not great. So a lot of times we'll supplement with enzymes to help people get through that. It's kind of like when you're injured and you might need a knee brace or cane, or whatever it is to help you while your joint heals. In the same way, we use digestive enzymes to help in the digestive process to give the gut a break so that it has time to heal. Restore is all about restoring the gut microbiome and that's through probiotics, prebiotics, as well as fermented foods. Uh, so we focus on what are the right um, elements for each of those. And then enhance is a word that I use to describe repairing the gut lining. And it's all about reversing the leaky gut with nutrients like L-glutamine, which is the most prominent amino acid in the human body and also a really important energy source for the cells that line the gut, as well as other herbs like licorice, but we use DGL, deglycerinated licorice, which uh, doesn't cause the blood pressure to rise. Aloe vera, marshmallow root, slippery elm bark, which was used by the American Indians as a gut tonic, as well as like to heal wounds and, and things like that. So it's got a, a lot of these have a long history of use um, in natural medicine. And so combining all these things, these four simple steps, um, they may feel complex, but I try to make them as simple as possible. It allows the, the gut to heal and rebalance the gut microbiome. And the amazing thing is that you're not counting calories, right? So you're just eating high nutrient dense food. And by doing that, um, a lot of times without even trying, person loses weight. <laughs> well, guess what? It happens because we're healing the gut. We're reducing inflammation. When your body is not inflamed anymore, it's like, oh, okay, I can let go of this weight that I've been holding to kind of protect myself from all this inflammation that's getting through the gut barrier. That is so awesome. I think it's amazing what the body will do, allow, you know, happen if it's in optimal health. And I hope every listener picked up on that clue earlier because we really said it and we may have stepped over it to to get to something else juicy, but here it is again that you know when your body is gaining weight or it won't lose weight, it's resistant to it, that's like a sign or a symptom. It's mm -hmm. not something necessarily bad that you've done. It's just responding poorly to something you're putting in it or that was in it. 
and it, the body actually is on your side. So even and, at midlife, and I can't tell you know, how many times I've I've met people who are stuck for <sighs> lack of a better word. Yeah, their body's just not moving. Like there's no matter what they do, things are not changing. And then when you focus in and you do a cleanse and you do gut healing, suddenly what seemed really hard just happens easily and naturally because like you just said, you're, you're giving your body what it needs to be in optimal health. Love it. Okay. And now you have a group cleanse coming up in May. When does it start? How can people join? Uh, that's yeah. Um, I have a group cleanse that's starting in May and the, the, the pre cleanse is going to kick off, um, on May 9th, but the actual cleanse starts on May 16th. So mid month, some people might be thinking, oh my gosh, but how about the holiday Memorial day? I think it's actually a really great thing because I want to, I'm going to be guiding people on this cleanse. This is the first time I do this in seven years. And this is probably going to be the, the most integrated guy, guidance that I do. Um, so they're getting time with me, which now is very difficult <laughs> to get because I only work with a uh, select few patients. And we're going to be doing it through Memorial Day into the beginning of June. Um, and I think it's going to be really great. I'm going to be implementing the four simple steps, my happy gut blueprint. I'm going to be teaching people how to get through all this. And they can learn more about it by going to happygutmasterclass.com. So good. All right. We are definitely putting that in the show notes. And uh, I want to know, so this is going to live forever in eternity. You know that. So <laughs> if a listener is listening far down the road and they're like, oh my gosh, he sounds great. This sounds great. I need something a little bit more in depth than what I've tried to do. Will there be a wait list? Will there be something something else that they can do similarly? Yeah, um, they can they can always do the, the same cleanse self guided. They just go to happygutlife.com and look at the different programs. And if they really want to dive in and learn more, they can read my best selling book, Happy Gut. Uh, it's chock full. It's basically like a mind dump of all all of my, um, all the information <laughs> that I had in my, in my brain at the time when I wrote that. And I'm actually working on my second book right now, uh, which will be out in April of 2023. Wow. So there's going to be fresh new stuff for people to do with a bunch of new recipes and stuff for gut healing and, and losing weight, boosting energy and feeling great. So good. Dr. Pedre, thank you so much for being here. This was a wealth of information. Listen, everybody, as you're walking, you're lifting, you're maybe you're commuting, you're going to want to listen to this one again, because there were a lot of golden nuggets in it. And we covered the show notes for you. So you don't have to commit that to memory, but we've got all the links where you can join Vincent. You can follow him on social, but definitely if you're thinking about that cleanse and you, you know, right now, your gut is not really a hundred percent. I may actually see you in that cleanse. So <laughs> there you have it. Awesome. Yes, yes. please. Yeah, you, you know it. I mean, we're not immune to those changes either. So listeners, I know there may have been questions that you wish I would have asked. And I would love for you to drop those in the show notes. If you will, it'll be at flipping50.com forward slash weight loss for women over 50. And what are you waiting for? It's time to start flipping 50 today. <laughs>